right now. Very pleased to have with us on the uh, program. Uh, Dr. A.W.R. Hawkins from BigGovernment.com. How are you doing tonight, Dr. Hawkins? Oh, doing great, Cam. How are you? Excellent. Glad you could be with us tonight. Uh, you know, I, I know you've got a, a new piece out on uh, BigGovernment.com talking about uh, President Obama's comments regarding Fast and Furious. He, he talked to ABC News' Jake Tapper earlier this week. It was interesting that ABC News actually didn't feel like it was important enough to run the video uh, of uh, President Obama being asked about Fast and Furious. Instead, we got to hear about Jake Tapper and uh, President Obama's love of Dr. Seuss uh, rather than uh, President Obama's remarks on Fast and Furious. But he did say, quote, uh, it's very upsetting to me to think that somebody showed such bad judgment that they would be allowed, like uh, that they would allow something like that to happen. And we will find out who and what happened in this situation and make sure that it gets corrected. He said that those responsible for Fast and Furious, uh, quote, will be held accountable now what's your take oh my take is that uh, they're still still trying to get some type of smoke screen up we know already as you know cam that uh eric holder has not told the truth eric holder has misled congress misled the american people dennis burke uh did the same thing with uh brian terry's death so on and so forth we could keep going but we already know at least a few of the people who are responsible. Let's put it that way. And nothing has happened to them. So fortunately, Congress is stepping up and telling him basically to put his money where his mouth is on this deal. Uh, yeah. And, you know, at, at, at this point, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got, as you said, uh, Congressman Jason Chaffetz, uh, Trey Gowdy, uh, asking President Obama to clarify uh, some early remarks that he made, because this is really, I mean, you know, while he says, oh, yeah, we're going to get to the bottom of this, well, there are a couple of other things he would like to get to the bottom of. For instance, uh, in, in March, when President Obama's talking to Univision, he uh, uh, said that, you know, I, I didn't know about this. I didn't authorize this. Attorney General Holder didn't authorize it. Uh, and then in May, more than a month later, Attorney General Eric Holder says, well, I just learned about this a few weeks ago. Okay, so... So when exactly did you learn about this? And when did you have this conversation with President Obama saying, hey, I didn't authorize this? I mean, the, the, the timeline uh, that the president and the attorney general have offered here doesn't really add up. No, Cam, and you make a great point. I tried to make it over the weekend in an article, which is this, that, you know, for the attorney general to deny knowledge of Fast and Furious in a conversation with the president in March, in order to deny knowledge of it in March, you would have to tell him about it so that he could then say, I knew nothing about it. So there's no way that he didn't know about it in March. And the Univision uh, interview with President Obama that you mentioned, that, that's a damning interview because Obama just talked openly. I don't think, I don't think he and Holder had gotten together yet and, uh, and compared notes and to be sure that they were going to cover each other at that point. Uh, no, I think that I think you're probably right. You know, I, I think back then they all were hoping that this was going to be a blip on the radar uh, and that this really wasn't going to amount to anything. I mean, we, you know, for for the first couple of months of this, uh, we got a lot of poo pooing from the administration that, uh, that, you know, there really wasn't anything to talk about here. Uh, and then, you know, they, they, they kind of changed their uh, their their tact uh, a couple of months ago. And it's, well, okay, there, there were mistakes, but, uh, you know, still really not, not, not a lot of there there. Uh, and now, I'll be honest with you, Dr. Hawkins, I mean, the, the response from the administration, whether it's the president, whether it's the attorney general, is such a muddled mess. You know, on, on the one hand, you've got folks saying that uh, this was a great operation, wouldn't change a thing. Uh, you've got President, or excuse me, Attorney General Holder saying that, uh, uh, yes, serious mistakes were made, but, but the investigation is a, uh, a political witch hunt. Uh, and really, what you haven't seen from the president himself, I know that he said it's very upsetting to him, but he doesn't act like somebody who's very upset about this. No, no, he doesn't. He, I, I'm with you. He, he, he simply talks. He's detached from everything. Uh, he is a classic leftist. As, as you were talking, Kim, I'll tell you what I was thinking about. Uh, this, this is another example of how out of touch the whole administration is. Everything you said is a perfect example. Another example, like today, I don't know if you saw, Biden started talking today about how he may run for president in 2016, that, that he's willing to entertain the thought. 
Well, he doesn't have a prayer of getting elected, but he's so out of touch that he just puts all his thoughts out there where people can hear him, and, and that's exactly what Obama's done. On Fast and Furious, I think he's so impressed with his own speech that he just talks about whatever comes to mind, and sometimes he says this, and sometimes he says that. There's, there's nothing in it that's connected, and when you hear him from one day to the next talk on it, it, it doesn't even sound like the same guy sometimes. No, it, it, it doesn't. And, you know, I know we've got another uh, House Oversight and Government Reform Committee hearing coming up next month, uh, likely uh, conducted jointly with the House Judiciary Committee. I don't know what the uh, what the topics will be. I don't know what they're going to be focusing on. But given uh, this letter to the president, uh, given the fact that uh, Congressman uh, Pat Meehan uh, has sent a letter to Eric Holder, uh, you, you you I mean, really, the offer has now been made for both the president and the attorney general to uh, to come and, and, and talk to the committee about Operation Fast and Furious, what they knew and when they knew it. That's exactly right. And, Cam, I think maybe last time I was on with you, maybe time before that, we talked about other letters that had been written by Congressman Labrador and some other folks that have called not simply for him to come and speak but for Holder to resign. Those letters are going to accumulate. There are going to be more of those. As as ISA wisely lets a little bit more information out to the public so we can see more of what's happened, as that happens, there's going to, there will be more letters calling for Holder to come uh, and testify, more letters for him to resign. And at some point, Obama is either going to have to step up and tell him to get out, or uh, he's going to have to choose on his own to take a walk. You know, and I, I'll be honest, I mean, I just don't see that happening. I, I really don't. I don't know how this is going to end up, but I, I really have a hard time seeing the attorney general, uh, you know, walk away because of Fast and Furious. No, and I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not arguing with right. you on it. I just. It's just. I'll tell you. My feeling is this. I wouldn't. If you back up two years, I wouldn't either. Or if you fast forward two years, I wouldn't see him doing it either. But the problem is, in a year and a few months, there's an election. And I believe as Democrats begin to pile on Obama to say, look, this is an albatross around your neck. If you get rid of Holder, we might get enough relief for you to get reelected. I believe that changes the game. I believe only because the election is upon us. That's the only reason that we might get rid of him. Uh, you know, that would be, uh, yeah, that would probably be the one thing, uh, you know, if, if, if he had to get thrown under the bus, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, but that's, you know, in order for that to happen, I mean, I, I, I'm I, kind of wondering, and let me ask you what you think about this, is the Obama administration trying to run out the clock uh, on this investigation? Just, you know, keep it keep it open, uh, maybe maybe release that Office of Inspector General's report that I'm sure is going to, you know, exonerate uh, uh, administration officials. Maybe release that uh, at some point as we get closer to Election Day. But with the House Oversight uh, Committee, with the uh, talk of a special uh, investigator, drag that out past Election Day next year. Oh, I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, these people, we, as you know, we're dealing with people who are, uh, I know I shouldn't call the president a psychopath, so I won't do that, but we're dealing with people who have no conscience. And so they will do whatever it takes to stay in power. That's always been the left strength. They understand that, that holding office, that politics is power, and uh, I don't, you know, what you're saying to me seems like a scenario that's very likely. I just hope ISA is aggressive enough, and so far he has been. If he remains aggressive, he keeps them on the defense, not on the offense, and he might take that option away from them. Well, we can only uh, we can only hope. I mean, I, at this point, you know, I and I think most people who've been following this story, we don't know where we don't know how the story is going to end. But we want answers. And, and, you know, and as Representative Issa and Senator Grassley pointed out in their letter to uh, FBI Director Mueller uh, yesterday, while we want answers, and certainly they want answers, the family of Border Patrol agent Brian Terry, they deserve answers. And, right. and, and they've not even been able to receive the most basic information uh, regarding the circumstances around their their son's death, around their brother's death. And, you know... We're almost a, a, a year out from that from that murder. I mean, that really is unconscionable that, uh, again, just some of the basic facts surrounding uh, Agent Terry's death uh, are, are still, you know, behind lock and key. 
You're exactly right. And, and that's what's on my mind when I see Michelle Obama or Barack Obama or whoever stand before the American people and talk about how we have to remember our military and we have to remember our servicemen and we have to give back. And, and you know those words are empty when they speak them because if they believed what they're saying, one of the first things they would do is at least call the Terry family, if not go up and knock on their front door and express to them the pride we have in Americans for the price that Brian Terry paid to serve this country, and then also to express their condolences. No one cares, though. They want to pretend like his death didn't really happen, and, and that's very aggravating. Well, they can pretend all they want. Uh, it doesn't change the fact that it did. It doesn't change the fact that within hours after his death, you had emails uh, uh, circulating through the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office in Phoenix and the ATF field office uh, bound and determined to uh, 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 keep fast and furious uh, as far away as possible uh, from the public knowledge of uh, Agent Terry's death. They did not want it to get out that uh, the guns that were found uh, near Agent Terry's body had been sold as part of Fast and Furious. And, you know, uh, Dr. Hawkins, I, I know that Attorney General Holder and the uh, Justice Department have poo-pooed the idea that uh, there was a third gun, perhaps, um, that, that has not been accounted for. And in that letter to uh, the FBI director yesterday, Representative Issa and Senator Grassley point out that two of the guns that were recovered there uh, at the scene of Agent Terry's death that were sold as part of Fast and Furious, there was a third gun that was sold at that time. And we want to know what happened to it. Uh, there's there's uh, speculation or allegations that perhaps as many as five guns uh, were uh, being used by the cartel members. Were any of those other firearms recovered? Uh, we, again, you know, some real basic uh, information that uh, that we just have not been able to uh, to get from this administration. Well, and Cam, and just think about this. I have a brother. If my brother were that border agent who was killed, I wouldn't care whether fundamentally whether it was one Fast and Furious gun or five. I'm I'm with you. If there was if there was five guns, we need to know about it. But the fact is, we know there were two. We know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. And one was enough. There was one Fast and Furious gun. It killed this border agent or was used to kill him. For that reason alone, somebody needs to go to prison. Somebody needs to pay a price because that operation, Fast and Furious, led to the death of Brian Terry, and there's no way to dodge that. Were he my brother, I would be miserable seeking justice right now and seeking closure, and the Brian, Brian's family is being denied that. Well, one can only hope, uh, Dr. Hawkins, that, again, one day, you know, the family gets these answers. I hope that it is uh, not too long in coming because I think, frankly, they've waited long enough. But, uh, again, really pleased you could join us on the program tonight, sir. Have a great weekend and uh, look forward to talking to you very soon. Cam, I look forward to talking to you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Dr. A.W.R. Hawkins joining us from uh, BigGovernment.com.